What's up, everybody? Thanks for checking out this tip from turningpointmusic.net. Today, I'm going to do part three of the Fat Kick series. So, going to jump back to the session we were playing with before. So, we're back at baseline as though I, I've done nothing, no plugins on any of these tracks. And the tracks we're focusing on are, of course, the kick itself. and the two bass tracks. So today I'm gonna to do this differently. I'm gonna do the old signal generator to key with an aux thang. So if you don't know what I mean, you will in a minute. So go shift command N, command down to go mono aux and hit enter. I'm gonna call this kick low gonna call it kick low new because apparently I did that before and on this I'm gonna instantiate a signal generator plug in other signal generator and if you didn't have something solo it would be squeaking right now which we don't really want to hear so then going back to our pitch to frequency mappings we know that this is in D sharp so it's gonna be between 39 and 78 and there's no right answer. It's just whatever works better for your track I'm pretty sure for this I would do 39, but you can just try either one and see what you like. So let's try 39 So go back to signal generator punch in 39 Hertz And then let's take a listen So that's going to be the sub bass of our kick, but we just have to hook it all together. So what I want to do is make a send from my kick itself. So go to the kick track, pick a bus, right click, rename, kick new again, because I've done this a few times, and then click on it, bring it up, or command click on the little letter if you want to, no, it's not listening to me. Oh, well, let me do that in this window, huh? Oh, that's interesting. Look at that bug. There we go. Little bug. So command click on it if you want to see that fader. I'm going to make it a pre-fader send so that the level of this is not linked to the level of this, and then I'm just going to crank it up. So coming back now to our kick low new that if it weren't muted would be humming our low sub bass. I want to put a gate on that. So go plug in dynamics, dynamic three expander gate. This comes with pro tools. Everybody has it. Now grab that, that kick chain that we just made kick new again. That's the one I just made right here. So grab it here. You can see this is still going, but as soon as we grab this key and put here, that mostly stopped. And I say mostly because there's a little still peeking through. So let's, let's play with this. So I want to have the ratio all the way up in the range, all the way down, so to speak, so that nothing gets through. You can see if I let this up. some of it starts to come through, which you don't want. You want to completely cut off. So what we're, we're getting to happen is whenever the kick hits, it's gonna trigger this to open up. Let's solo the two of them. Now, of course, we're gonna have to adjust the levels and everything, but we can at least see this working. Let's go back to soloing just our kick low new here. So how much you want that to drag or how long you want it to be is just totally up to you. It depends on the key of your, or not the key, but it depends on your track, how quick the kick drum hits are, just your overall vibe. Let me keep playing with it a little bit. So what you start to hear is if you get the attack and the release and the hold too short, you start to get a little bit of a pop there. Now, whether or not that matters is up to you to decide. And is it hidden? Un and let me turn this down just a little bit. It's louder than we would have the sub bass. Is it hidden underneath the kick? 
No, it's not. That's awful, right? <laughs> so what you can do is just throw an EQ after the gate. And I'll just grab this one that everybody's got and just do a low pass. Problem solved. So now let's go and listen to them together again. What I like to do is make sure that these frequencies aren't clashing because what we've done here is basically just blindly forced 39 hits, which 39 hertz, which is the key of our song to hit alongside this kick drum, which already has some of that in it. So I might want to address that. So I'm gonna option drag this EQ up there. I'm gonna click factory default to factory default it. Then I'm gonna go here, make this parabolic and type in 39, make the Q very skinny. And then a good test to do is you're gonna pull this down slowly, the gain on this EQ band and you would think, okay, well, I'm gonna hear lots less bass, and you may, in fact, not. It should clean it up, so let's listen. Again, we're hearing soloing the kick low and the kick itself. What I really like about this, if you do decide that this technique works for a given track, I don't do this all the time, I just do it sometimes, it just depends on what I'm working on, but it gives you really an independent volume, an independent track for the low, the low low or the sub bass of your kick, which is what this fader is. And what I might do is come back in and push the higher octave a little bit. So I'm pulling out this frequency because we have it right here with our kick low track. But then if you go back and look at your pitch to frequency and see that your higher D sharp is at 78 Hertz, I might go here, type in 78 Hertz and push that a little bit, see how that sounds. And then you might throw a limiter on. Before I used a multiband here, I'll just use a regular one. And you don't have to have this, you could use Waves LL3 or FabFilter, whatever you got. But I'm just gonna bring the threshold down a little bit and I'm really just protecting against clipping and then just squashing a little bit, but I'm squashing it with 78 pushed in and 39 pulled out. Where we were. And then we have this now in there too. And now in your mix, just get a balance between your main kick here, and then I'm gonna shift click on this little fader, get both of them. So just get a balance between these two faders, which are comprising your kick now. For the record, this is the part of the mix I would really wanna do an open error with speak monitors and a subwoofer because this is very much subwoofer frequency so I'm not definitely not hearing the whole picture in headphones. So that's how you do it. That's the whole basics of, of tip three here and how I, what I wanted to show you. Now for the record I would go in and do the same kind of processing with the bass here that I did previously where I would side chain into the low maybe into the high that whole thing but if you want to get back into that check out fat kick tip number two, because we already did, did all that. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for checking out the tip.